Hello there and welcome to the Ask Time Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games, and all that jazz that there's no tomorrow. This week we're talking about bodies, bodies, bodies. My name is Tom, and as always, I'm joined with my co-host, John. How are you this week? Hello, I'm feeling great. What a title of a film. <laughs> uh, Indeed. Bodies, bodies, bodies. <laughs> if you expect a, a horror film like The Mysterious Witch or Smile. Have you seen those trailers? At oh the my god, like- I've seen the trailer for Smile so many times. <laughs> And the exorcist thing, if you know what I'm talking about, like the, the, this Catholic training. Oh, school, I oh, I know, I know the one you mean. I know the one you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah sure, sure. Horror films. It's 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 October. Happy October. It's spooky season. It's Woo! all the spooky. all the stuff's coming out. We got Werewolf by Night next week. The MCU is going to attempt to do something horror oriented. Who knows how that will work? But for now, bodies, bodies, bodies. Briefly explain the plot for those who don't know. <clears throat> when a group of 20-something gets stuck at a remote mansion during a hurricane, a party game gone very, very wrong ends with a dead body on the ground and fake friends at every turn as they try to find the killer among them. <laughs> Ooh, I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. When it says among them, there was a game called Among Us. I'm oh, sorry. Yo, oh, 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 of course. Of, of course. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That made me wonderful. Absolutely it's wonderful. Like that. You can't even hear a phrase with among in it without giving a little <laughs> <laughs> a little a little a little snicker over there. I'm sorry. Um... It's so stupid. <laughs> right. Anyway, carry really, on. well, bodies, bodies, bodies. If you haven't seen it, please do, because we are going to be talking full spoilers. And I have to say, this film is quite the spoilery one. There's many twists and turns yeah. and so much that goes on. What did you think? It's a story that unfolds every minute and at the beginning it just like builds up the characters that we see that's going to go totally wrong you know like something mysterious or mystical or you know something like like the shining you know the house itself you know the mansion and it gave me the, the shining vibes and then you get to explore these characters as you get to see their personal discussions or anything that goes wrong and then it's just funny sometimes they just like talk about social media and then have some words like gaslighting or oh you're so toxic and she's like oh this is all about you and it's funny because it's just like the current gen z it's like gen z humor really <laughs> don't you sound like an old man right now oh these these gen z's talking the way Dan- that they do no because i'm trying to say that, that i get that's you how it's, gen it, z it's, it's it's very kind of like modern in the way that it presents youth and i think that it does yeah. it really well for you know i feel like i watch a lot of films and i will see them portray young people people close to our own age and i'm like it feels like it's written by adults who don't know you know what the experience to be a teenager in the modern times is but this time i think that it does it really well there is a a, a moment at the end when one of the characters talks about her podcast and i have to say it was one of the best moments in the film and not just because we are here on the podcast and you know like i oh my God. i just found podcast. so much to like so much to relate to and so much like funny you know like when when she's talking oh, about yeah. it, when they're like let her have her podcast and, and she's talking about doing a podcast takes a lot of effort and she's talking about all the different things it takes i, love I just that. thought that was brilliant yes i love that when she said that that was just so funny and she got really personal about it and it's just so funny it's just like that's what we just do we just talk and then yeah. and then they just got really toxic about the podcast. Like, eh, I don't like the podcast. And they just got upset about it. There's a lot of small things that you don't really think are important. And by all means, they're not. But they're really blown out of proportion. For example, there's this whole bit where the same character who has the podcast talks to another one of the characters. And is like, you know what? Your parents are upper middle class. <laughs> and they end up having an argument. Just about that, just about that small thing, something of which I've never been in a, a situation with my friends, and I'm sure most people haven't, where they argue about what social class their parents are. And I think that that makes it just this really intriguing study on the priorities of today. You know, the final, again, spoilers, but the final reveal is that the first person who dies, they do it in an attempt to look cool on TikTok. And to me, that is just perfect. Like, that is just... Like, how honestly, how far away? I mean, people probably maybe even have died. People died doing things like planking. How far away are we from getting to that point where people are dying just trying to do TikToks? It's really got it straight on the pulse of exactly, you know, what youth is like. Yeah, I just loved the ending because 
as you said, it just defines whether you are obsessed with like TikTok or YouTube YouTube Shorts. They've done this weird thing called YouTube Shorts, which is yeah, stupid. I I'm sorry, I YouTube. I guess Instagram's got it with Reels as well. They're all trying to oh, kind yeah, of, Reels. you know, trying to and hop on the bandwagon <laughs> of TikTok's success. Yeah, and then the ending, da, 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 it was just so funny. And it was so unexpected because the film, you know, it was building up like, oh my God, who killed David? Oh my, oh my God. And then I love how they just found it out through a TikTok. And it was just so funny. Like he was just dancing to it. And then you've got the sword. <laughs> and there's a great way of like the opening. The opening does so well because there's a character which he died for no reason, Greg. So Greg, Greg, oh my, my guy, God. he did nothing. He he was just chilling and it, he was like relaxing in the, I don't know what it was, like a gym area. Yeah, it was like a gym area. Yeah. And he died for no reason. And then at the beginning, he had this sword and then he used the sword to get the champagne cap. Yeah, to slice he, the, the, like, the champagne Oh off. my God. And then David was like, oh my god i should do that that's how the film actually begins that is crazy and we just pour one out for my man greg i want to say that he is such an interesting part of the film first of all lee pace i love lee pace anybody who's watched guardians of the galaxy he plays the villain Uh, in the first guy of the galaxy movie he is thranduil in the hobbit and I just love him. I think he's great. And seeing him in this, he's such an interesting character because the film and the characters, it's positioned that you're suspicious of his character. Like very obviously, like the fact that he is in a relationship with somebody who is so much younger than him. The fact that we are told very early on that he's a vet, he fought in the war. We see him as dangerous. And in the scene where they confront him and he is basically standing around defending himself, confused and they end up killing him out of out of defense themselves. But what you find out later is that he wasn't at all a veteran of war. He's a veterinarian's assistant, you know? Like, he's oh, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally dies for no good reason. And all of this kind of paranoia that we, that, that we as an audience and the characters had was all pointless. The entire thing was pointless. And again, showing that these, like that everybody's blowing everything out of proportion which is and which is just this metaphor for just the way that youth deals with things in general yeah and there was a great joke i didn't know who it was but wait let me just get the character me oh yeah alice and she was like but he said he was a vet it was like no what, was he a veteran no a veterinarian it was great that one you know was, you just explore and then as i said earlier i really like you know exploring the characters you know personal feelings and how the characters feel one another in this film and there was some great conflicts with them so like sophie it was great because i thought sophie was the killer mm. because she had the gun and the interesting thing was at the beginning you know when they played the first bodies game yeah yeah you know like it's a fake one. Oh my god, they killed Greg. Uh, and then <laughs> Greg. Uh, Greg. Uh, and then Sophie. We love you, Greg. We stand uh, Greg and, on this podcast. And then Sophie just walks in the dark nonchalantly. Mm. She's, if you remember that, she just walks in the dark yeah. like she I mean, just doesn't care. Sophie's a really interesting character because the final act unravels and you see that she is just this really kind of manipulative and you know like Mm. cruel person who is using people you know for her own you know benefit and there are seeds of that as you say like throughout like you see in her conversation with david she talks about speaking to her parents you know because she wants to get her like fund back or something and and you see in that final moments when b her girlfriend is hiding from her like she's genuinely scary like the cast in general is amazing like like just every single performance is immaculate and amanda lustenberg she plays the innocent and she plays the likable but she's also terrifying at the end and i just want to say she's been cast as the lead in one of the upcoming star wars shows and great choice i think that she is just so good in this movie and i like i think everybody you know i've seen quite a few of them before in things and i just I'm so down to just watch whatever they do because they all were so captivating and really sold these roles of likable, but also completely unhinged. Yeah, and there was, as you said, manipulative 
she manipulates other characters so like she manipulates jordan saying that b isn't the person she is and really is and then she kicks him out of the house and yes. that is terrifying you know that it's like oh who's the killer now it's just like gets really interesting and then there's some great details you know like she goes to the car and then the car window is still open and nobody cared about the car window but she did that's an interesting scene because b finds jordan's pants which yes. you, know, you don't really you, right. you think you think that. that's a you think that's a bit odd but then later on when jordan says that her and sophie got together when b and sophie were together so like sophie was cheating on b you do read that completely differently and and it's an interesting study on the kind of character that b is that b doesn't tell sophie that you know there's no reason in her lying when sophie's saying i didn't i didn't do anything with jordan and I think that, again, like all these characters are, are just so compelling. And there's like, there is interesting like ways to look at the scene with B and how she is kicked out of the house. As an outsider, B is completely turned against and everyone, including Sophie, you know, for small details of like the stories that she's told them, like lies that they feel like is enough to say she's the killer. And, they, and as she said, they literally kick her out into the hurricane, which is just insane. And I think it's, a, it's, it's an interesting choice to cast Maria Bakalova as B because she doesn't have the same accent as everybody else. So immediately, you know, when they're asking her, you know, where are you from? And these kind of, and, and these questions that are framed as kind of uncomfortable for B to answer. It's showing this kind of herd mentality immediately, this suspicion of B. But I never considered it would be B because I feel like the film follows her. And, you know, we see that she doesn't kill David at the beginning. But the film, like, definitely shows these characters as all pretty, like, again, like they all have this toxicity in them. Yeah. And I really like that she killed one person. Uh, she killed the... Greg. Yeah, she killed Greg, man. No, well, Greg, my she, man. Well, she acts like, you know, we're the audience. We're exploring the house. We're exploring these friends. And we're exploring these really toxic people. And there's a lot of twists and turns. And I really like that. we just in for a ride. And we just don't know what is going to happen. Oh, and another interesting thing was, you know, when the lights just turned off, like it was like blackout yeah. and it was really interesting because you know you probably thought it was like oh no it was like david or something yeah because you thought david was going to do something for the rest of the film because at the beginning he was really sad about losing the bodies game and then david died and then emma i really liked the character of emma because again she was like manipulative against david and then also other people and there was one line that got me really interested from david was that Oh, she's the actress from Hedda Gabler. And if you know what Hedda Gabler is, it's like a play from the late 1800s. It focuses on, on a woman who lives in a middle-class house. I think it might be upper, but middle-class. She wants to escape from this whole mess because she didn't want to be married to this guy or to be in this situation at all. But she's only there to be a witch, you know, have money and lots of things, but she feels trapped. And I think that's the whole theme of the film. Like the characters feel trapped and they have a lot of conflict towards each other. And I think that's a great thing to explore that. But Greg, I don't know what Greg was. <laughs> I, I didn't just died. But Greg, 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 Greg is just the Lord, Lord, Lord Greg. Um, no, that's a really good point. I didn't actually know that. So I think that that is a really compelling way to look at the film. Like, yeah, like these characters, you know, and, and they are all kind of self-destructive and a lot of their kind of issues like stem back to like their class and, and these kind of issues. It's a great way of like using those to look through these characters as, you know, it's a big house, it's like a mansion and all these characters like have conflict towards each other. And I thought that's a great way of like seeing that. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that you mentioned that the lights go out because this power cut is a big part of the way the film looks. And I love the way that it's shot. The cinematography is so frantic and chaotic and confusing. <laughs> and it really, pardon you, and it really, That's it fair. really... It really puts you in the mind space of the characters when you're suspicious and you can't really see what's going on and you only have limited light. And it makes a lot of like the moments like confusing and questioning. Like when B sees Jordan with the gun, you know, you might be thinking, well, because of the lights, you know, like, what how, are you seeing what you think you see? And all these things. And, you know, like when Emma falls down the stairs, if she did fall down the stairs, which I do we ever, I don't think we ever find out if that's actually no, how she died. No, we never got an explanation who actually killed her that's the weird part 
that creeped me out, Emma. She was on the floor and she was like dead. It was like, oh my god, that yeah, that actually creeped me out. You know, like, you can see the. You know, I'm not gonna get into it. That creeped me out. But yeah, there's no explanation how she died slash killed. Yeah, like that's all kind of left to the audience's imagination. I guess I need to look on YouTube and <laughs> type in what happened to Emma in Buddy. Yeah, you Buddy's gotta. You, you got to find some somebody else who can explain it to you. Um, Actually, it was well, those if you, the mansion. If you, <laughs> that's good. That's good. It was yeah. actually the spirit of David the whole time. It was Greg who actually got up from the dead. Greg can never die. He's a strong person. He would never hurt a fire or anyone. Because look at him. In the first scene, he was just so confused. In that scene, he was so confused. He was like, guys what's going on and then he just died that is basically uh... greg in a nutshell yeah so i th- i think that the whole thing with emma is, is a really interesting one because again like at the end of the day every character in this film is simultaneously a protagonist and an antagonist you know even greg we love greg but even he at least in the audience and the characters minds is an antagonist briefly but you know when it comes to emma it really muddies what you think of these characters because you know like sh- like she may very well be like you know one of the only like malicious kills whereas a lot of the other ones were accidental or in self defense you could at least argue that and i think that emma is very interesting because it, it definitely adds to your fear of sophie in those final moments when she's looking for b around the house and and i think that all of that comes down to Cinematography and lighting play such a huge part in that in that because the whole time the limited light and the way that the camera kind of darts about, it makes everything so confusing that when it's the next day, you kind of sit there and you're like, wow, this was all for nothing. This was all so pointless. Like, and 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 that is also when the characters see what David did and how he actually died. And it's actually like completely different from what they expected. Yeah. The characters were so chaotic to explore throughout the film. And I thought that was a great way to, you know, explore the film itself in general. And great time. No, not a great time. But they just, they it's just a blo- it was just a bloody great time. Yeah, it's a bloody great that's time. A, yeah. That's my kind of uh, party. Death, yeah, um, drugs, guns. This is this is it. This is and the all and end all. Dancing for one time. They danced for one time. And then Greg mm. was like, having the Craig was having a fun time, man. He was just, he was living the best life. He was just Absolutely. Like, the music itself was complimenting the film a bit because I thought it was like very modern and it was like saying not what the film was going to be, but there wasn't any like scoreish music like Indiana Jones, Raiders of Lost Dog. That's the score, but <laughs> I think it would have been amazing if halfway through the movie they're all like trying to find out who the killer is and then just dun 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 that would genuinely be amazing that's a power move right there exactly they just play on spy and they're like let's do it <laughs> but yeah the one thing that it was the soundtrack that was just consistently playing throughout the film it was just like songs that were electronic like party music i thought that was a great way of like saying what the sound of the film you know like what is going to be like you know it's like a house party and then boom bodies 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 and and boom you looking for this but boom oh yeah i heard about the news about um i'm a war it's gonna be a movie (laughs) We won, lads. We won. Well, um, we I won. Think, I, th- I think it's interesting the way that they use the score in particular, or just the music in general, whether it be score or licensed music. Music. The, the the way that like again that kind of reflects like the youth and the way that like they kind of listen to music. It all kind of reflects that kind of confusion of that time of of of, of one's life, and also like the confusion of the characters themselves. And I think it's interesting how the entire event like this is something that even the characters themselves point out. The events of the movie reflect their own bodies 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 game you know like the way that they all act towards each other and the suspicions and and even some car- i can't remember who but some characters are like guys don't you realize this is bodies 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 and um, you know like we're actually playing the game that we were playing before but in real life and i think that was just really kind of compelling this film it's basically a who done it like the entire time yes you're wondering who the killer is and that's a big narrative driving force and i want to relate that to another film that we've both seen recently called see how they run and I oh it was yeah good... I, yeah I saw right that on the next day i was like oh right oh, okay. nice Time for another who done it <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. that's a good that's a good film but i feel like 
and it's a film that kind of centers around the play the mouse trap and i hadn't watched or read the play in any capacity so when i watched the movie i definitely felt i was out of touch a little bit because of the way the movie reflects the plot of the mousetrap obviously it diverts things in certain ways i'm not going to spoil anything but i felt like i was a bit of a step back and then once i found out about the mousetrap i was like oh that kind of clicks into place however bodies 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 through showing you their original game before it becomes real i feel like the way that the plot reflects it and then subverts expectations becomes so much more effective and i thought that that was just brilliant yeah and i'm sorry i keep laughing at the word among us i'm sorry if you just let listen to this like why is john still laughing about this i'm sorry my humor is broken and listen 2020 was a difficult year for all of us yeah but anyway <laughs> buddies 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 what a weird title but do see it it is absolutely amazing like go see it with your friends go see it. wait 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 wait. if you're listening to this and you still haven't seen the film what are you doing yeah, we've spoiled everything for you, but definitely, definitely go and see it. I mean, it's definitely one of my favorites of the year. What are you going to give oh, it out yeah. of 10? Nine. I'm also going to go nine. We didn't really talk about what our critiques would be, but if I could critique it on one thing, I would say that while that opening act is very well constructed, I would have liked maybe a little bit more time to get to know the characters before they're picked off. Simple thing, yeah. you know, maybe five more minutes, something like that. I don't know, but that would be my critique. Anyway, Tom? Yes. Thank you, everybody, for listening. (laughs) I don't know why I was like, yes! If you you enjoyed it, if you're listening on YouTube, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to see more of listening on Spotify, you can follow and give us a five-star review or whatever star you think is appropriate. Next week, we're going to be doing Werewolf by Night. We were going to do Prey, but you know what? We've covered every live-action MCU thing, and we're, we're doing that instead. So, you know the the time of the time of doing great films is over the time of the mcu begins once more but we're doing rings of power the week after that and i want to say rings of power episode six that aired this week oh my god it was incredible no i'm not going to spoil anything but holy 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 moly if you guys have seen it you know what i'm talking about the ending beautiful great episode and, and we will talk about that in a couple of weeks. You can email us as well if you want to tell us your thoughts on Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Ask us questions about our thoughts, just anything in general. You can email us at ourstimefilmpod at gmail.com. We will answer it right here on the podcast itself. And you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ourstimefilmpod. Yeah, uh, thank you for listening. If you enjoy us talking about Bodies, 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 share, like, and then subscribe. I sound like an ordinary YouTuber. Hey guys, like and subscribe. Don't oh forget God. to smash that like button. And subscribe! Yeah, that's how uh, <laughs> talk about. Was that, really, but was that like, a Muppet? That was, that was, I don't know what that voice was. That was, sounded like know. one of the Muppets. Oh my God, it did. It was like uh, animal. No, it was mm. animal, right? Yeah, it was like animal. Subscribe! Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, <laughs> sorry for doing impressions at this time. We whip out the impressions in the last minute. Yes, the bonus round. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Take what you're given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. Goodbye.